Man, I don't want my water to end up like that. And I bet you don't want yours to either. Water pollution is slowly killing us. Did you know that the average person in our generation is predicted to have a credit card worth of plastic in our bloodstream by the end of our lives? It's terrible. Don't worry though, there are ways that we can stop this. With this simple short video that I'm totally not making for a grade, I will teach you about water pollution and show you ways that we can stop it. Just please give me a good grade. What is water pollution? I mean, it's pretty obvious, right? Water pollution is when water gets polluted. Water pollution can happen from many things. First, there's your wastewater. You know how you shower, use the bathroom, brush your teeth, wash your hands, and do your dishes and laundry every day? All that water after being used is called wastewater, and most of it is completely unusable without being treated. Oftentimes, wastewater isn't treated after going down the drain, which means the water and everything that you put into it goes right back into the environment, like soaps, old foods, medication, and even your own body waste. Fun fact, Tide Pods, the cheap and easy snack for kids that can also be used as laundry detergent, have a thin plastic coating that gets dissolved when thrown into the wash. All of those microplastics get dissolved right into the water, go down the drain, and right back into the environment. Disgusting. Wastewater isn't the end of it though. There's also chemical runoff from farms and lawns. There are two major types of chemical runoff with different but equally terrible effects. Fertilizer and pesticides. Pesticides, in my opinion, are a whole issue on their own, and their contribution to water pollution is just one of their many downsides. Pesticides are made to kill plants and bugs that you don't want in your lawn or farm. However, big surprise, they can kill people too. Pesticide water runoff can make water unsuitable to drink for both humans and animals. It can also potentially make that water completely unusable for plants, killing them very slowly and very painfully. You know Chinese water torture? Well, imagine that, but with hydrofluoric acid and multiply it by 10. That is what you were doing to these poor, poor plants. Oh, well, if you're so worried about the plants, then fertilizer runoff shouldn't be that bad, right? Wrong. Fertilizer runoff can cause an entirely unique problem. Too much life. It's like the opposite of the Grim Reaper. Fertilizer runoff can cause plants and algae to grow way more than they're supposed to, causing an imbalance in water-based ecosystems. If you paid attention in your third grade science class, then you would know that that is bad and can cause an imbalance in water-based ecosystems. This imbalance causes some fancy sounding effect named eutrophication. This creates large patches of water where no life can live. It's like a payday freezer. The last form of water pollution I'll be covering is industrial waste. You know those factories that are all across the country that make literally everything you know? Well, fun fact, they have waste. This waste either gets thrown into the air, polluting the environment and destroying our lungs, slowly killing us, or it gets dumped into the water and it makes it taste bad. Even though the government has enforced pro-environment laws that are made to prevent pollution, there's still a lot of industrial waste that ends up getting into our water supplies. With all this pollution, chemical runoff, and water waste, you must think we're absolutely hopeless and we're bound to all die in the next two to five business days. That's not true though. There are many things you, a water-worried American, can do to prevent you and your people from dying a slow, dehydrated death. Now. Minimizing your contribution to water pollution isn't easy, but it's well worth the effort. Get it? Because like, it's like a, a well, you get water from a well. Firstly, you can use less plastic. Plastic manufacturing contributes a lot to the industrial waste side of water pollution, horribly affecting our water supplies. Using plastic and not recycling it properly oftentimes just gets it thrown back into the ocean which then fills the ocean with microplastics. If we keep on improperly disposing of all of this plastic, people are gonna end up getting born with credit card chips in them. Speaking of properly disposing of things, make sure that you properly dispose of used oil, cleaners, and other similar things. Letting them go down the drain will ruin your pipes and contribute to water pollution. Plus, 
You don't want to waste a perfectly good sports drink like that. You also don't want to flush any mold medication. It might dilute into the water and give someone a free high. And I don't want anybody to get high off me for free. If you want to get rid of old medication, throw it away or down it all at once. That works for everyone, right? That's a joke, by the way. Please only take the prescribed amount of medication. Do not take more. Otherwise, you're going to be in for a really fun art class. Also, make sure not to litter. Any trash that reaches storm drains oftentimes gets into the water, and then that water goes completely untreated. This goes right back into the waterways, leading to all of the issues I've already mentioned. This also means that you need to pick up your dog's sh** whenever you take him on a walk. If you don't, that means you're probably going to end up drinking your own dog's poop. Water pollution has to be one of the greatest tragedies ever since the release of the Virtual Boy. I beg of you, dear viewer, to do everything that you can in order to prevent water pollution. Because I'm going to be honest with you, I don't want to drink your dog's sh**.